from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this AMD Athlon 3000G processor. It's got AMD Vega graphics in it, so it's actually an entry level processor. It's probably not far off as low as you can go, but we're going to actually see how it can actually perform, see if it's able to be overclocked, and see if you're able to even play any games with it, even if it is uh, low end 720p graphics and something along that, that for casual gamers. We're going to compare it against Intel Pentium Gold G5400. There are links to this product in our description, so feel free to take a look. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the box. So, as it says on there, it's an AMD Athlon processor with Radeon Vega graphics. It doesn't say the actual model number on the box, uh, or at least not on the front. On the side you can see the CPU through the cover there. It does say it's an AMD socket AM4, which is pretty straightforward. On the back it gives you all your basic information, and the other side it just says this is an AMD Athlon processor, blah 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 blah. Um, the model number is actually on the top on a sticker, so this is a generic box they probably use for quite a few different models. And it's all on a sticker which seals it as well there. Okay, so let's open this up. Okay, so this is what you've got. You've got your heat sink here, which is fairly pretty standard. The thermal paste is pre-applied on the bottom. Doesn't look like there's any copper in there, so it looks like pretty much aluminium with a basic fan on top with the standard clips and your four pin uh, connector there uh, to connect it to your motherboard, which obviously adjusts the fan speed and powers it and so forth. Also inside the box you've got a little orange sticker here, well it's not a sticker, it's a leaflet, which basically says the same thing, it says on the same of the side of the box there, but a little bit more in depth. You've also got installation instructions, which will show you exactly how to install an AM4 processor in a few seconds, but that's basically tells you all your information there. And then you've got the CPU itself, which comes with a nice little sticker, comes in a little plastic tray. And you've got your AM4 CPU there in the little tray. Try not to drop it, because on the bottom, if you're unaware with AM4 CPUs, there are lots of little pins on the bottom. And if you bend one of those pins, uh, then it's very hard to bend them back into place without snapping them and there's a good chance you are going to kill the processor because one of those pins don't work your processor doesn't work simple as that but there you go so that's what the processor looks like okay so i'm going to quickly show you how to install an am4 cpu so the first thing you need to do is make sure obviously your a you've got an am4 cpu socketed motherboard which this one is um, and then you need to find the corner of the board, which has got a little arrow on it, and this one is here. And when I say a little arrow, it's quite small. Some of them can sometimes be painted in white, so they stand out. But that basically is a keyed corner, basically, so that will allow your CPU to fit in. And the base on the CPU, you will also have that same mark on your CPU, and that mark goes into that corner. Otherwise, if you do it another way, it won't fit and you risk bending the pins on your motherboard. So you get your processor, which has got that um, basically arrow in the corner, and that will push into that corner. But first of all, you get this little lever, you push it away from the CPU slightly and pull it back. That basically unlocks it, so it'll let you put the CPU in. Now very gently you get your CPU without touching the pins on the bottom because if you damage those pins you're going to struggle fitting it onto the motherboard and potentially destroy the CPU in the process. So if you've done this, if you've not done this before it can be a little bit unnerving. So you make sure you line up that corner with that corner and then you basically drop it down and you'll know when it's in because if you wiggle it, it will not move in the socket. Once done, you push this little lever down there, and it clicks into place. So it should go under a little plastic tab there, which holds the lever. So then the CPU is in firmly. I'm just going to show you quickly how to attach a standard 
cooler to it. Bear in mind, different coolers are slightly different. But the basics is, the cooler has two clips which will go over these areas here. They can be a little bit fiddly sometimes. So, but the basics is what you do. You get your cooler. And if you haven't already got thermal paste on the bottom of it, which this one has, you'll need to put thermal paste on the actual CPU or the bottom of the cooler. And then basically you drop it down on top of the processor. So it fits like that. And you'll notice there's two clips either side, one at the top, one at the bottom. Now depending on how you're setting your machine up and how the cooler is, you may find these clips might go the different way around. But the basics is you clip one over the plastic on the end there, then the other one will do the same on the other side, which can be a little bit of a pain sometimes, but there you go, once it's in, it'll be in, but you'll notice it still moves. This is where you get the lever, and then pull the lever all the way over, and that tightens it in. Once you hear the click, that means it's attached. And the last thing you've got to do is get hold of your power cable that goes to the fan on the CPU cooler and plug it in to the correct position on your motherboard which is usually marked with an icon what says CPU. Okay so let's get down to the benchmarking to see how this performs. The full specifications of the machine we're using are in the description but basics we're testing an AMD 3000G against an Intel G5400. We did also overclock the AMD processor to 4.1 GHz at 1.3 volts and as you can see on the CPU uh, multi-core that the processor performs very well. Uh, checking on the single core thread um, just to see how that would perform as well on Cinebench and again it outperforms the Intel processor. Only by a little but it does outperform it so that is pretty good news. Carrying on with the creative testing we decided to test Handbrake and basically what this does is allowing us to convert a 10 minute piece of footage from 60 frames per second 4K footage down to 1080p 30 frames per second footage and it gives you a rough idea how long it actually takes and this is in seconds. So as you can see there the AMD does actually perform fractionally better than the Intel and uh, saves probably an extra minute if you overclock it. Next we used Performance Test 9.0 on this, the CPU mark score was pretty much identical um, between the Intel and the AMD processor. Again, overclocking did give it a bit of a boost, but in reality, it's down to pretty much a small margin. On the next few tests, we're going to test gaming performance just to see how it actually performs at games. First game up is, well, a 3D game testing program called 3D Mark, and we're testing through this standard Time Spy settings. And as you can see here, the AMD 3000G near enough doubles the performance over the Intel G5400. I had to retest this just to make sure it was correct, and it is. Basically, the graphics score on the AMD processor are drastically higher than the Intel, which is very good news for AMD. Okay, in the next test, we're basically going to run Civilization 6 and see how long it takes to actually do a turn. Um, it takes generally over a minute to actually take do a turn. Um, bear in mind, all the game tests, apart from Counter-Strike, which is our last game test, all run at 720p uh, and are running on low quality settings because again this is a budget processor with built-in graphics it isn't a top-end gaming machine but unfortunately here for the first time uh, Intel actually does beat the AMD processor um, which is unfortunate and it's um, beats it by around about 10 seconds now moving on to Grand Theft Auto here you can see that the AMD processor is actually doing very well compared to the uh, uh, Intel processor. 
The 3000G comes out of this test with nearly 10 frames per second faster, and if you overclock it, you're looking at 15 frames per second faster, which is pretty good, and it is playable at that um, frame rate, so that's pretty good news. The next test now is Total War Warhammer 2. Uh, unfortunately, this was pretty much unplayable on whichever um, processor you're using. You really need a dedicated graphics card, even at 720p. But saying that, the Intel processor got roughly 12 frames per second. Comparing that to the AMD at 21, uh, that is pretty good from AMD, in considering it's only a basic budget processor. Next is CSGO. We've run this test in full 1080p, and again, the AMD absolutely slaughters the Intel processor here with over 100 frames per second in comparison to 73 on Intel. And you're getting even more of a gain, around about 15% gain, uh, if you manage to overclock the processor as well. And bear in mind, when we did the overclocking, we just used a stock cooler, what it came with. We upped the voltage to 1.3 volts, and then on top of that, we upped the multiplier up to 41. Power consumption-wise, again, the AMD is better than the Intel. Uh, it does use a little bit more juice when overclocked, which uh, is not surprising. Uh, but saying that, an overclocked AMD processor actually used less juice than the Intel did at standard stock settings. So, yeah, I really, really recommend this processor for low-end budget systems.